The liberal stream media in Hollywood in full meltdown following the Supreme Court's reversal of Roe v. Wade. Comedian Wanda Sykes and Late Show host Stephen Colbert echoing what many on the left are feeling. It right just here. sucks, man. It, it, it really does. I mean, you know, it's like the, the country, it's no longer a democracy, right? I mean, we're, it's, no, it's no longer majority rule. No, no, certainly not right? in the Senate, certainly yeah. not in the representation it's, of the it's, Supreme it's Court. Not, yeah. It's not, it's no longer majority rule. And, and I mean, it's like the, these judges, they just, I, they, they basically lied when they were, you know, being, during their confirmation hearings, right? Max Boot of the Washington Post says this about the recent Supreme Court decisions, quote, we're experiencing what the founders feared, a crisis of governmental legitimacy brought about by minoritarian tyranny. Joe Concha said this. Reporting on both sides of this issue has gone completely out the window. It's let's get up on a moral pedestal and lecture the American people on what's right or wrong instead of simply reporting the facts and talking to folks on the ground from both sides of this. And, and that, that's what happens in these situations. Media doesn't report much anymore. They take a side and then run with it as if it's absolute fact. Ben Dominich, Fox News contributor, is here. He's got a new documentary on Fox Nation called Overturning Row, which you can stream right now. Ben, so great to see you. They, there is a fundamental uh, lack of intelligence when it comes to the foundations of this republic. Yeah, uh, it don't is, you what love... they're saying is just upside down wrong. It's, it's, it's completely upside down, dang it. I mean, uh, consider the situation here. The, the Supreme Court basically just put this question, this deep moral question about abortion, back into the hands of democracy, back into the hands of the voters and their representatives, having had it ripped away for almost half a century. They are now saying uh, that, you know, the people can decide this question. The states can decide this question. And so for Wanda Sykes to go on there and Stephen Colbert to, you know, nod along and say, oh, yes, you know, this is a very important point that you're making. Obviously, you know, our moral arbiters now, uh, these late night hosts. Uh, and and to declare this in such a way, it's, it's completely wrong. And then for Max Boot, this warmongering moron who is someone who has nothing, no understanding of the American founding, who ought to be yeeted out of a cannon into the sea to come into this debate and say that this is a tyranny of a minority issue? No, it's not. It's taking something that always should have been decided by the states, their representatives, their voters, and giving it back to them. That's a good thing. Trust the people. Trust the people. They can make these determinations for themselves, and they do not need to have them decided from on high uh, by a bunch of people in robes. And that's something that I think is going to be beneficial, ultimately. And it's going to be surprising, I think, in terms of the fact that we can live together. We can disagree. We can have fundamental disagreements. But we can live together as Americans. When Max Boot, when boot's not a noun, it's a verb, and I don't mean <laughs> boot kick. Uh, one thing, but this captures the people who live in states outside of the, the deep blue bubbles of New York and California and the like, that it's the, it, in, it captures the deplorables, rubes, rednecks, hayseeds, hicks, that vision of so much of the country. So why don't these liberals... Uh, you know, they're moving to Texas and Florida, but really, like, if you want to change policy in those states, you got to move there. And you have to make a difference and convince people that you're right. But they it's don't want to rub elbows with... It's a very old-fashioned idea, Dagan, that you actually go to people, meet them where they are, and convince you, convince them that you have the right of the argument. Uh, what an old-fashioned and crazy idea, and yet it's the fundamental you know, balance that happens in our representative democracy in a, a responsible way. Look, I, I care passionately about the abortion issue. I will argue with anyone, anywhere, about the abortion issue. I'm happy to have a debate. But one of the reasons that I'm happy to have that debate is because I believe we ought to have that debate, because we ought to be able to meet each other where we are and to go back and forth. One of the reasons that we made this documentary, Overturning Roe, is because we wanted to be able to tell a story of something that many people thought was resolved in 1973, and then a bunch of people, a bunch of common Americans who woke up the next morning and decided, this isn't over. We're going to fight. We're going to march. We're going to 
be activists, we're going to try to change people's minds, and ultimately what that effort led to was this decision, a decision that puts this uh, back into the realm of political debate, back into the realm of, of discourse uh, in states across the country. And look, we're going to have different results. We're going to look more like Europe, where there's different, uh, you know, right. uh, weak bands and, and the like. Uh, but that's something that I think is very beneficial, and it's a, it's going to be an illustration of the fact that a democratic republic still works. Right. We don't need to outsource this to people in robes or to big tech or to big corporations or to Hollywood or the like. We can decide this for ourselves. You're touching on what is the very greatness of our Republican system and what we're capable of. I, I want to get your reaction before we go. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, just one person of many on the left, pressing President Biden to use federal land in red states to provide abortions. I'll start with the babiest of the babiest of the baby steps. Open abortion clinics on federal lands in red states. Conservatives roasting the idea, one tweeting, yes, Democrats, please run on turning our national parks into abortion factories. Another, the tribes ain't going to have this. One more, AOC sounds like a toddler. A new op-ed with the snarky headline, AOC and Senator Warren's master plan, abortions at Yellowstone, is in the Washington Examiner. Members of the Biden administration are not on the same page about this at all. Listen. Can the administration expand abortion access or abortion services on federal land? I mean, it's not right now what we are discussing. So congressional Democrats are calling for the Biden administration to create clinics where people could access abortions on federal lands. Are there any plans to do so? We are aware of a number of ideas and proposals, many of which we have been considering internally ourselves. But as I said, Every option is on the table. Ben, they have no idea what they're doing. The babiest of babiest of baby steps. Uh, you know, how do, we, how do we get more baby steps? We have fewer abortions. I mean, Javier Becerra is uh, a good example of the kind of person that you have deployed in this situation. He's someone who has no experience in health policy. I worked at HHS under the Bush administration. He has no awareness of these issues at all. He is a political hack. Uh, and one of the things that I think we've seen from this administration is they're willing to do all sorts of crazy things when it comes to trying to uh, reach out to the farthest left portion of their constituencies. So I wouldn't put it past them to come up with some ridiculous thing where they try to put uh, abortion availability on federal lands across the country. But what I will say is this. This is an argument where they are losing. They, they are winding. Uh, they are not uh, the representation of the future. Uh, people are turning against them, and they're turning against them because they know the truth. They know the truth about the way that human life is formed and the way that it matters and the point at which we ought to protect it under law. Didn't Javier Pizarro sue that group of nuns? <laughs> yes, yeah, in fact, he did. And and Kamala Harris raided David Daleiden's uh, house <laughs> when he exposed Planned Parenthood. These are people who are just total hacks on this uh, on this issue. These are not people who you can trust uh, in any way, uh, and they will engage in all sorts of underhanded uh, things to try to undermine a movement that I believe is the future in terms of American politics. Well, you can watch. Ben's special on Fox Nation. Ben Dominich, thank you so much. Great to be with you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts, Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany, on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.